All right, everyone. The other day, Kamala Harris, when she was speaking to reporters, uh, used the term Harris administration, uh, featuring Joe Biden, I suppose, as sort of the second fiddle. This would comport to what I've said would happen if, you know, indeed Biden does win the election, which is he's not the acting president. Essentially, Kamala Harris is the acting president. He is the Trojan horse by which to get her into the White House. And then they know that he's going to fuck off within the next couple of years because he's demented he'd have to resign or he might die he's had aneurysms and so forth now the whole idea is to get your first female president not on the basis of her qualifications but simply because she's appointed to that position having been the vp now if it only happens once you can chalk it up to well maybe kamala harris is just being power hungry Maybe she used that particular terminology. It was like a Freudian slip. But then Biden later on actually used the exact same terminology, a Harris and Biden administration. This almost seems, it's almost like a dog whistle, I think, to elements of the public that are just not really taken in by Biden himself. Because you'll remember, like, the very first campaign poster that they put out together, uh, Harris and, and Scott Adams uh, weighed in on this and thought it was amusing and, and very telling. Uh, Harris was in front of Biden and was in the picture larger, uh, and he's sort of in the background. It's a very sort of symbolic thing, and I have to say, I think the people that script everything that they say did this on purpose. Um, I think that they are trying to uh, make elements of the left understand, don't worry, this old centrist white dude, which is not someone that you'd normally vote for, uh, he's, he's just the means by which uh, this strong, empowered uh, uh, per person of color happens to end up in the White House. She couldn't win on her own. Kamala Harris was a distant secondary candidate uh, at best, and that was after the first debate. Um, she was the only one, apparently, that came prepared. Everyone else had jet lag, and she managed to score a couple points. And all of a sudden, people weigh weighed in and said, well, she's the heir apparent. Well, that was never going to happen because there's no possibility that a person like Kamala with her track record, with her unique disqualifying features, I would say, could ever become president of the United States. Trump would be curb stomping her right now if she were the candidate. Biden, meanwhile, is seen by the more moderate voters as the safe sort of alternative to Trump. Well, basically, well, you know, I'm not really taken in by all this lefty stuff, but you know, I don't like Trump, so I'm just I'm riding with Biden. It's a really bumpy road, and we got three flat tires already, but you know, I'm riding with him because that Trump train goes too fast and it's scary. Kamala Harris, though, is, is disqualified for the presidency. When you think about it, her track record is basically mass incarceration and nonstop pandering. We gotta talk about Biden increasing up in the ante, in the uh, pandering department with his Despacito bullshit the other day. Uh, this, their campaign is basically off the rails. But this happening twice indicates that the speech writers are involved. The, the, the focus group probably said, hey, if you just dog whistle about a Harris administration, it'll put in the minds of these leftists, don't worry about Joe too much. He's not the one you're even voting for. Oh, fuck, I've been saying that since she was chosen for the running mate. Since Biden became the nominee, which happened before he clinched because nobody could stand up to him, it was obvious from day one. Biden is 78 years old. He's had two different aneurysms. He's had various other health issues. He is clearly suffering from dementia. If he is by some miracle elected, if he doesn't crash and burn in the debates, and where we unfortunately see a Biden presidency, it'll be only a presidency in name. He is a steward candidate. He's the dude that you put up there to just be normal, not to have any big ideas, and you use him as a Trojan horse to get your, your cabal, uh, the Kamala cabal, into office. Joe Biden is not a person at this point. He's a group of oligarchs that want power. He's just the puppet. He's, he's the friendly face, of course, if you dig through his record, which he very carefully is trying to hide from public view. <laughs> and if you dig through that record insofar as you're able to do so, you find basically it's him voting for war and tax hikes and to steal money from Social Security for other purposes and everything else under the sun. He's never, to my knowledge, voted against a tax increase in the entire time he was in office. You find that he was basically a court jester VP, and now you find that towards the end of his life, he's not really the candidate at all. They're basically, I, I mean, what super drugs are they pumping him full of to keep him, keep him standing? Half the time, it doesn't look like he can barely do that. You know, he's tired, you know, Sleepy Joe is a little bit more than a meme at some point. 
Sometimes he trails off, he doesn't even appear to know where he is. He's not of sound mind. Now, normally, you'd think that this would be disqualifying for the presidency. There should probably be, I, apparently he hasn't even taken the cognitive test. Why? Because you're afraid that if you release the results, people will tur be turned off by that? Probably so. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. But not just Kamala. She's only one of them. She's part of the group of people that wants power. She's, she's part of that neoliberal core. She can pretend to be like far left and all this shit, m m Green New Deal and stuff. That's just a, a way to uh, justify tax increases. If you can get the left riled up about an issue, you can get them to, to want more taxes. It's the oldest trick in the book. That's what authoritarians do. They have to make you feel afraid or angry in order to gain more power. They, said they sell you snake oil, they get you all afraid, and then they say, what, well, don't worry, for a small fee I can take care of the problem that normally I myself have caused. That's how left-wing authoritarians work, and of course all authoritarians technically by default are left-wing, so-called right-wing, or you could say at least traditional movements that have authoritarian uh, leanings to them, they all do the same thing. Be afraid of the heretics, they're going to poison the water. Be afraid of... of this other nation over here be afraid of this voting block because they're voting their own self-interest that's exactly what these people do on a regular basis what are they doing right now oh gun violence is through the roof uh climate change is causing the whole country to burn to ashes like there have never been bad wildfire seasons before recent modernity uh, it's a bunch of poor shit and kamala harris if she were the one pushing these things couldn't get elected she couldn't get ele elected dog catcher. Her likability ratings were far lower than Biden's. That's why they chose Biden. He's rated as more likable. Not, not He doesn't cause enthusiasm, but he's more personable. He looks the role certainly more. Again, think about... We're going to play this mind game briefly one last time. Think about what role you would cast these various people in for president. Trump already... He, he's, he's got the equation solved because he's the incumbent. That's the incumbent advantage. It's already believable. Joe Biden, at this point, would be cast off as the steward president. He's the older dude who has a bunch of corrupt underlings that are really running things. It's literally a real-life scenario. I would, I would cast this, if Biden wins, as a documentary about his presidency, as opposed to a fiction. Kamala is the person you cast as the evil, conniving president who smiles, but it's always a phony smile, and behind the scenes is pandering, taking money, and trying to figure out how to nuke people. It's a, honestly, it would be a bit frightening to know that she was the one that was actually technically controlling the nuclear triggers. Because she is the kind of severe authoritarian who might be crazy enough to start a world war or something. Not likely, but it's a possibility. Biden, no. Biden just plays the game. He just wants to be there. He wants to be president, clearly. He's run several times before. It's not like he waited until he was old and demented and said, well, I want one last hurrah. No, he's wanted the presidency for decades. He's just never gotten a shot at it before. He got to completely shafted and ass blasted in 2008 and collapsed right out of the gate, which was funny as hell. The Democrats have taken a, a perennial loser in the executive sense, and because of the fact that he was VP once, they've decided to actually make him nominee as a Trojan horse to get Kamala Harris and an oligarchic cabal of globalists into the position of the highest branch of government uh, in order to try to screw with things, in order to create more taxes, go to war, and enforce globalism. They want to do a 180 and return, go away from the populism we've managed to promulgate, which has helped the economy, which is helping the American people, and I would argue everyone around the world. They want to abandon the United States because they are globalists. They have no specific loyalty to the United States whatsoever. Not one shred, not one iota. That's about all. Peace out.